While we actually can't rule out Apple's new headset, the Apple Vision Pro, as a VR headset, many people who wanted to get the recently released MetaQuest 3 are now questioning if it's worth to get the Vision Pro instead. Despite the huge price Apple has set, the main difference you should keep in mind here is that it's more of a mixed reality headset, meaning it can display both virtual and augmented reality content. It is not like augmented reality glasses, as it is designed to completely cover the eyes and block out all of your surroundings. And while the functions might seem alike from afar, we're going to look into their features. How different is it from flagship VR headsets now? And what are you really signing up for if you decide to go ahead with this Apple purchase? Be sure to check out the description below for links of the hottest deals to both of these headsets. But without further ado, let's dive right in. Apple doesn't want anyone to think of the Vision Pro as a VR headset, but it still shares similarities. Just that this is the first mixed reality headset Apple has released. And while the MetaQuest 3 featured impressive upgrades over previous Quest models, including a much higher resolution of 2064 x 2208 per eye, it still falls short compared to Apple Vision Pro's display capabilities. Apple Vision Pro comes with micro OLED displays in the headset, capable of delivering a full 4K resolution in each eye. These insane displays are the main reason the Vision Pro is so expensive. They're at the heart of the Vision Pro experience and what makes the whole thing work. The Vision Pro also comes loaded with 12 cameras, 6 microphones, and 5 sensors to track your eyes, hands, gestures, and voice to control the headset, which otherwise makes using external controllers useless. And while the Quest 3 cameras and sensors aren't as powerful as the ones on the Vision Pro, Meta's headset does get a brand new camera array on the front of its visor. This array includes dual 4MP RGB color cameras and a depth sensor in between them to create a more accurate representation of the area you're using the Quest 3 in along with full-color video pass-through. The Apple Vision Pro, meanwhile, lives in mixed reality pass-through by default. But turn that digital crown and you can immerse yourself into a virtual world. The Quest 3 seems to primarily reside in the virtual world, though with the addition of mixed reality pass-through being largely determined by whatever app you are using. And in terms of speakers, Apple uses spatial audio with its audiopods. Meanwhile, Meta says the Quest 3 produces 3D spatial audio with improved volume output, 40% louder than Quest 2, increased bass, and is compatible with headphones via a 3.5 mediator headphone jack or Bluetooth 5.2. You have to note that only the Quest 3 is a true standalone headset, the Apple Vision Pro requires that you plug the headset into your wall outlet or into an external battery pack that fits in your pocket. And the Quest 3 has no such restrictions, keeping the battery in the headset visor like Meta did with the Quest 2. Now let's talk about performance. The Apple Vision Pro comes with two chips, the M2 and R1 processor. Both are designed by Apple and boast impressive performance and specifications, including a high-resolution OLED display, built-in speakers and microphones, and a range of sensors for accurate tracking and movement. The M2 processor handles the hardware portion of the premium ski goggle-like headset, while the second chip, the R1, works alongside M2 to process data from Vision Pro's sensors and cameras. This varies hugely from the MetaQuest 3, which features the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chipset, promising a wider field of view, more portability, and serves as a perfect introduction to AR slash VR for beginners. But in the true grand scheme of things, Meta is strongly dedicated to using Qualcomm's mobile processors, which are unable to match the power of computer-designed chipsets. While these mobile chipsets offer certain benefits, such as power efficiency, they cannot rival the pure performance of the Vision Pro's combination of M2 and R1 chipset. The battery life of these two headsets also stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, offering two hours after a single charge but MetaQuest 3 mostly depends on how you use it. While both devices seem to offer mixed reality features, the Apple Vision Pro keeps users almost constantly in the real world to a degree, with mixed reality passed through by default, allowing users to immerse themselves into a virtual world by turning the digital crown. This is as well offered by most headsets such as the HTC Vive and Quest 3, but Apple's headset is by far the most advanced blend of mixed reality in a standalone device. Therefore, the best mixed reality experience goes to the Apple Vision Pro, while the MetaQuest 3 focuses on offering a better experience for gamers. But what sets it apart is that there are no controllers. Every interaction is done with your eyes and hands, or speaking to Siri using the built-in microphones. Hand and eye tracking even works in the dark. 
Of course, light is needed for room tracking, but not for hand tracking. You can also take spatial photos and videos, as well as take 3D stills and videos using the headset itself, or capture spatial videos with the iPhone 15 Pro and iPhone 15 Pro Max, but not photos. However, as good as the headset seems, it lacks compatibility with major apps such as Netflix, Spotify, or even YouTube, which forces you to use Safari browser to access any of these apps. This is a huge bummer, especially if you wanted to download movies or watch offline, but you get Apple TV and Disney Plus pre-installed, plus other basic apps made for the Vision Pro. The main features that sets the Apple Vision Pro apart from the MetaQuest 3, besides the lack of controllers, is its eyesight feature, which allows others to see a digital version of your eyes when they try to talk to you while you're wearing Vision Pro. You'll see the person break through into your view, and they'll see your eyes. It's a subtle effect and a bit creepy looking, but it's effective, and something we haven't really seen other VR slash AR headsets introduce. You also get a 3D personal avatar made from scanning your face, which looks impressive from a technical standpoint, but terrifying. There aren't any real VR games or fitness apps though, so there's nothing like Beat Saber or Red Matter, or even Population, which makes the MetaQuest 3 a more great choice if you want a headset that truly focuses on gaming. Plus, it's hard to imagine how these kinds of physical game experience would work with no controllers and that external battery. The Apple Vision Pro starts at $3,500, which is super expensive compared to even the MetaQuest 3, which ranges around $500. While this is a huge drawback to anyone who is looking to compare these two options, it's not a huge shock given the high-end features Apple has integrated into this headset. So, the question remains, is the Apple Vision Pro worth it over the popular MetaQuest 3? Well, this decision heavily lies on what you are looking for and how much you are willing to spend. If you want a true mixed reality device that could even replace your iPhone, you'll want to save up for the Vision Pro or wait for a cheaper counterpart to come in a few years. But if you just want to experience VR gaming while getting a taste of mixed reality features all in a standalone headset, the Quest 3 seems the best choice of the two headsets. In terms of entertainment, the 3D video experience on the Vision Pro is unmatched. An immersive video in particular has a ton of potential to change the way we view everything from concerts to sporting events. This Vision Pro app situation is clearly still in the early stages with some notable heavy hitters missing at launch but the AR apps are still pretty convincing and should hopefully attract more developers to hop on board. But that's a wrap. Our comprehensive comparison between the MetaQuest 3 and Apple Vision Pro. The headsets are quite different in their own way and bring unique strengths to the table. So it's wise to consider what you are looking for and if you're ready to cash in more for the AR experience brought by Apple. And being the first headset we see from Apple, it's pretty promising to what we can expect from future AR slash VR upgrades they'll launch. To get the best deals and discounts on these headsets, check out the links in the description below. And if you found our review helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more tech reviews and updates. Let us know what you think of these headsets or what's your take to this comparison. We'd love to hear from you. But until then, take care and see you in the next video.